feel good to be back. Hello, my fellow Latter Day Saints. Kenzie Redshaw here, the Mormon entertainer, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Asia. And I have been away for a while on a journey of self discovery to find who I really am. And now, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. After about three, four weeks away now, I'm back at the best place for your news, rumors, trophies, and achievement. DJ, hit the music. Because if you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the closet. If you're on the spot, you need to be in the store. Come on, we're here, brother. Yep, the podcast is back and it has been rebooted. Uh, I will not go into detail as to why, but what I will say is Man, it feels good to be back. Welcome to the first episode of the rebooted Trophy Achievement Podcast. The... Oh, looks like somebody wants to contact me. Uh, right, uh, so why I'm getting the intro out of Zve. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Folks, uh, had, uh, had a good friend, uh, on the phone with... Anyway, where was I? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, had a good friend on the phone there. But uh, nevertheless, let's get back into what we're going to be talking about this week on the newly rebooted Trophy Achievement Podcast. There's going to be there's, there's been a new game unveiled this week by the creator of Diablo. We're going to have details on that. Um, we've had not one, but two delays this week. One of them is for Red Dead Redemption 2, unfortunately. People were looking forward to that coming out late um, in the next uh, couple of months, but we're going to have to wait uh, a little bit longer for that. So, next up, what else do we have? We have got a uh, teaser for a new uh, Chachel game. A new Chachel game on the way. Oh, this, this page decides to load. Oh ah, there we go. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. A uh, new Chachel and new Churchill game as a teaser it, it, it's got a release date in fact that was all that uh right couple of new couple of new stories from Nintendo goodness me A new Chachel game has been revealed, so we've got that. And ooh, the air times that one. Uh, there's a Super Mario movie on the way, and uh, we're going to have the details on that as well. Nintendo Switch is going to have a paid online service. We're going to find out more about that later today as well. And oh, this will be interesting. Microsoft buying Valve. Now that could be interesting. Interesting. 
Microsoft planning on buying Valve, interestingly, uh, and not just that, as a more Nintendo news as well, uh, we've got uh, Mario Kart Tour coming to mobile devices. Now, what could that possibly involve? Well, let's find out. Uh, let's see, next, and of course, it's that most wonderful time of the month, where we have the Battle of the Freebies. Xbox versus PlayStation. Who has the better free games for February? We shall find out what the games are and what my verdict is going to be. And look, there's a got PlayStation Plus games as well. And in a huge surprise that uh, just came out just this week, in fact, thanks to my good my good friend James Rank over at Disabled Gaming Reviews. Uh, we'll get into that. A we'll get into that a little bit shortly. Uh, we have got ID Software co-founders confirming that its biggest games heroes are all related. Well, how's about that? And of course, in the signature points and trophies section, the trophy achievement hunter section of the show, I'm going to be going through one of this year's first major releases that just came out last week. Dragon Ball Fighter Z. <laughs> so, Vegeta, a small question. What does the Scouter say about the readiness level of Kenzie Retro? It's over 9,000! That's what I thought. I am ready to get started. But before we get into the news this week, I would like to send a big shout out to my good friends over at Boomerang Rentals, the very best place to rent your video games. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. If you sign up today, you can get a 21 day free trial and you can keep the games as long as you like. There are no late fees, three free game rentals when you start your trial and from your package, you can even rent the latest games, which is pretty sweet if you ask me. And let's see, what else do we have? Uh, yeah, packages stop and stop saying uh, see, And you can, you can keep the game forever if you want and buy it from the store at a discounted price. And that, and the link to that website, it is boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your video games. It's all love at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Oh, wait just a minute, ladies and gentlemen. That jingle means uh, something has popped up on the front of, um, on the front of, uh, one of the most hated video game com video game uh, companies in the world in the form of electronic arts. For those who know me very well, I really do not like electronic arts given everything that's happened recently and it's easy to see why. Right. So anyway, let us get into what did so let us get into the uh, segment that I like to call what did EA screw up this week? Let's find out. <laughs> so, jingle once again, good sir. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Thank you very much. <laughs> how I love my job, how I love this. Uh, right, I need to exit the I need to exit the page and I need to uh, load the page. Ah, there we go. Uh, now we got, now we got to do EA, EA News number one. And then we go to the EA News number two. There we go. That is it. And oh my goodness me. Oh boy. Let's. Let's stir the pot a little bit with the, the calm before the storm, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and of course, with me being a Mormon, I need to keep this family friendly to abide by the new YouTube community guidelines. But nevertheless, here we go. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, bad news, Bioware fans. Anthem's been delayed till 2019. And are you kidding? For some bizarre reason, EA isn't calling it a delay. That is one of the most contradictory statements I have ever heard from the company. It is clearly a delay if it has been announced as a delay. And you are trying to claim it is not a delay. That's EA screw up number one, ladies and gentlemen. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. And we'll get to that shortly. <laughs> Oh, I can feel the, I can feel the anger of the EA fanboys. I can feel their anger in the comments. Oh, how dare you bash on EA? We like the company. Um, you are aware of the bad business practices they've pulled off in recent months, aren't you? Apparently not. But nevertheless, let's get right into the article. Right. Following a detailed report from Kotaku last week claiming that Bioware's new IP was go Anthem was going to miss its fall 2018 launch window, Electronic Arts tells the Wall Street Journal that the game will indeed release in 2019. But even as it confirmed the new date, EA denied Kotaku's report, saying that the change has nothing to do with development being behind schedule. Rather, EA doesn't want to launch Anthem and a new Battlefield in the same quarter. <sighs> mm. Titanfall 2 released in between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty, anyone? Anybody remember that one? <sighs> it's not a delay, according to EA's, um, EA's CFO, Blake Jorgensen. He told the journal, people are trying to create a story. HYPOCRITICAL! Now, let's see, what do we have? Uh, a week ago, Kotaku's Jason Schreier, Schreier reported that Anthem would launch in early 2019 instead of this fall, with one source telling him that the original launch window was never realistic. Then why did you have that launch window as an option to begin with? <gasps> With Anthem, which is the studio's first new franchise in eight years, the stakes feel higher than ever, sources said. Mass Effect Andromeda, by the most recent release, was a disappointment, which makes Anthem's success even more vital. Anthem, which was one of our most anticipated releases of 2018, before the not delay, in quotation marks, they are being sarcastic. It appears to be the latest take on the persistent online shooter popularized by Destiny. The game takes place in a science fiction setting where the characters don mechani mechanized suits that allow them to traverse the open world and battle dangerous beasts. Hmm, now why does that sound so familiar? Don't we do that in Andromeda anyway? Its revealed trailer was one of the one of the highlights of E3 2017, and it, and it looked like a good, if ambitious, chart change, change of pace for Bioware. Why do I smell burning? Hang on a second. Ah, oh, it's, oh, it's just me. It's just me. It's just, just, just me, just me, just me, just me, just me, just me, just me. It's just me, just me, just me, just me, just me. Anyway, Shrira has a great track record, but with all the turmoil surrounding Bioware after Mass Effect Andromeda failed to make a dent with EA, still trying to course correct after the internet lashed out about microtransactions of Star Wars Battlefront 2, it's not surprising that the company is denying the report. Yeah, typical EA business practice there for you. Note to self, if you get a job offer from EA, do not take it or your, or your reputation will suffer. And some people learn that the hard way. 
Visceral Studios, Bullfrog, Pandemic, Westwood Studios. Tell him a few. Regardless of how it's being portrayed, we are not looking th at that at that as a delay. <laughs> yeah, right. We've chosen to launch Anthem in the fourth quarter. The date is chosen by portfolio balance, not product readiness. Release dates should only be chosen by product readiness. And if they go up against competition, then so be it. EA CEO Andrew Wilson, aka Gaming Satan himself, said in a call, and we're, and we're really excited by the way, that the new battlefield is shaping up and it probably, it probably doesn't make too much sense to launch Anthem right by it. As, the, as a new IP, it probably makes sense to give Anthem its own launch window. Worst Australian accent ever. But I really don't care at this point. Oh boy. Sometimes I just wonder why I bother with EA. Why do I bother with EA? Hmm. I think I'll need plenty of this to... Oh boy. Anyway. And you thought we were done with EA today, folks? Nope! Maestro! 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 Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Thank you. It's been long enough. Oh, we are far from finished with EA, ladies and gentlemen, because, oh my word, they haven't earned you. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Disney, please revoke the license from EA, please. Give it to someone else, please. Oh my goodness me. Oh boy. This is gonna end well. While Star Wars Battlefront 2 might have failed to reach EA's initial sales expectations, no kidding. That doesn't mean the company overall is suffering from a financial perspective. Are they not even aware of the fact that their stocks fell sharply because of how badly it was received? The company's stock price closed today, January 31st, at the time of the article's writing, at $126.96, which is up by almost 7% compared to the day before. That's a massive gain, equal to around $8.26 per share. The stock price surged above $131 today before settling to where it closed at the end of the day. A huge gain comes the huge gain comes a day after EA reported earnings for its fiscal third quarter. As we reported yesterday, re revenue for the period rose slightly to $1.16 billion. Overall, EA posted a loss of $186 million for the quarter, but the majority of the loss, this loss was due to $176 tax expense that EA incurred as a result of the recently enacted Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Um, no, the losses were down to the fact that Star Wars Battlefront 2 didn't sell very well. Or should I say, Star Wars Scandal Front to the atta uh, attack of the loot boxes. What might have investors enthusiastic about EA's prospects is the fact that the company is forecasting a revenue of $5.1 billion during its fiscal year ending March 31st and a profit of 1.015. Whatever that means. EA's massive annualized sports franchises, FIFA, Madden, and NHL, are all expected to return this year. No kidding. Additionally, it is a World Cup year, 
So that could help the FIFA franchise, even though the United States failed to qualify for the competition. Also, investors were like were likely happy to hear. I'm sorry, what? What? I'm sorry, what? Although investors were likely happy to hear this, that Michael transactions are coming back to Battlefront 2 in the coming months. Um that just means what does it mean? 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 It means EA have brainwashed their investors. Given that the game has already shipped 9 million copies, with potential millions more soon, good grief. You are killing Battlefront! That represents a massive install base for extra sales with microtransactions. Even if a small, very, even, even if only a very small percentage of players spend money on Battlefront 2 microtransactions, it could result in a huge revenue swell. In addition to its returning sports games, EA is expected to launch a new Battlefield game in October, which is yet another reason why investors might be feeling bullish. Whatever that means. BioWare's new IP Anthem is no longer coming this year, however, <laughs> as I was haunted just there. Additionally, EA said during the earnings call this week that it believes in micro that it believes in microtransactions. <laughs> no, it worships microtransactions like a god! And could apply them to more of its games. To which I say, you are killing your franchises. Another positive for EA is that uh, the mix between digital and packaged sales is trending in further in favour of digital. Like, uh, for digital full games and extra content, the margins are higher than packaged games because there is no physical retailers involved, though EA still pays some store fees for digital content. Speaking on the subject, of microtransactions this week, EA's uh, 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 gaming Satan Andrew Wilson said Battlefront 2 was a learning opportunity for the company. EA removed microtransactions from the game just before its public launch. In the <laughs> in the in the wake of feedback from the pre-release phase, players were understandably upset when it discovered that loot boxes containing game-affecting weapons. Item, items and abilities could be purchased with real money. This led some. This led some to believe that Battlefront 2 would would be a pay-to-win experience, which is exactly what it was. We never intended to build an experience that could be seen as unfair or lacking clear progression. <laughs> Hypocritical. So we removed the feature that was taken that was taken away from what fans were telling us was otherwise was an otherwise great game. It was an underwhelming campaign, and I haven't even played it yet. I just know from other people that said people did, there were people that didn't like the campaign, there were people that didn't like the multiplayer, and there were people that didn't buy it because of how easy, easy, keep it family friendly, keep it family friendly, keep it family friendly, keep it family friendly, keep it family friendly. And I've lost my train of thought now. There were people who didn't buy the game because of how moronic your business decisions were. Better? Thanks, Stephen Larson. We are fortunate to have such passionate players that will tell us when we get it right and when we don't. And even then you still don't learn from your mistakes. We're now working hard on more updates that will meet the needs of our players. How about not putting the microtransactions in, removing them from all your games, all, with, all together now, never to be seen again? And we hope to bring these to the Battlefront 2 community in the months ahead. EA is of course not the only publisher whose games use microtransactions. Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead partner publisher Take Two has said it wants to have some sort of recurrent consumer spending in all of its games. Games from publishers like Ubisoft, Activision Blizzard, and Nintendo also use microtransactions in some form. The microtransactions 
for loot boxes should only be for they should only be for cosmetic items only no extra characters no extra weapons no extra armor just voices and skin that's it cosmetic items only <sighs> those who know me well i've said it before and i'll say it again it is the company i hate not the games. It's the decisions that the companies make. That it's the decisions that EA make that cause me to not buy the games. Anyway, let's get more positive news now, now that the EA nonsense is out of the way. Diablo Creator unveils new game entitled It Lurks Below. Ooh. Graphics new creation combines elements of Diablo, Terraria, and Minecraft. Hmm. Interesting. Let's find out about this, shall we? David Brevik, creator of Diablo, has unveiled his new project, which launches this weekend into closed beta. Brevik's new game, It Lurks Below, mixes elements of Diablo, Terraria, and Minecraft, and launches on Steam later this year. Hmm. I could potentially get this. The game will feature an indie slash retro aesthetic, and those interested in a closer look at the game can tune into the game's first streaming event this Friday. Hey, that's today, in fact! <laughs> the closed beta runs from February 2nd to Monday evening, February 5th. And participants are encouraged to stream the game. Brevik himself will stream on Friday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Twitch. He will also stream on Saturday between 3 and 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Sunday from 10 till noon Pacific Standard Time and Monday from the same time slots. So adjust that accordingly to your time zone. Right, let's see. It Looks Below is Brevik's first major release since 2013, creating his one-man studio, Greybeard Games, after leaving his position as CEO of Gazillion Entertainment in 2015. Bre Brevik says it is humbling to go from large teams making content based on huge properties like Marvel to a one-man team with a brand new idea. And this is why the indie gaming industry is doing so well but he feels like but he feels like I'm finally right back where I belong actually getting my hands dirty and creating new games 
that's great to know. I'm looking forward to this game coming out. It looks below. It's definitely got my interest. Right. Uh, let's see what more positive news we have. And we have a release date for Chacho. Let's have a look at the trailer. <laughs> Enjoy some fresh screens of rage. The article starts with as the sub headline Chachel, the game about an angry ball of dust with a nice hat and a powerful Jones for cherries, will be out on March 7th. The news of the release date comes by way of a new teaser that looks a lot like the old one angry, percussive, and deeply weird. And hilariously awesome at the same time, from my perspective. It's a point and click adventure, but developer. Amanita Design said in October that Chachel will eschew complicated multi-stage puzzles in favour in favour of accessibility and laughs. Well, they're off to a winner with me. They've got my vote. The studio has possibly demonstrated a well-regarded ability to tell stories in games like Missionarium, Bot Botanicula and Samorost 3. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they handle a more straight ahead take on comedy. Chachel will be available on Steam, GOG, Humble and itch.io. Nice. Okay. I'm sold. Right, next up we have got a Super Mario movie on the way, confirmed at Minions Studios. Illumination! <laughs> right, so let's see what this is about. And Mi Shigeru Miyamoto could be producing it as well. Fantastic! This is definitely going to be good. Right, Nintendo has confirmed more details about its upcoming animated Super Mario movie, as suspected Despicable Me and Minion Studio Illumination will produce the film. This was confirmed during an earnings presentation today by Nintendo President Tatsumi Kimishima. Mario, cre Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto and Despicable Me franchise producer Chris Me Melodandri are co-producing the untitled film. Universal Pictures and Nintendo will finance the movie together with Universal Pictures handling the worldwide distribution. This I'm looking forward to seeing! Universal Pictures and Nintendo will finance the movie together da, 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 da. with this project. Nintendo will pursue its goals of effectively leveraging its intellectual properties in medium outside of video games and of bringing smiles to people around the world, Nintendo said in a press release. As previously reported, the plan is for the movie to be in theatres before the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. But we've got a couple of years to wait. That's also when Nintendo hopes to have the Super Nintendo Land theme park open at Universal in Japan. I would definitely go there. Miyamoto has previously experimented with, with film, even releasing a series of Pikmin shorts last year. Nintendo made, Nintendo made it clear it was interested in expanding to films, but that is, but that, but that, that it, but that it would like to, blah. Last year, Nintendo made it clear that it was interested in expanding to films, but that it would like to do more than just license something. Hmm. 
1993's live-action Super Mario Brothers movie was a critical and commercial failure with star Bob Hoskins. For, for, for the for the yay for the more mature generation, uh, Bob Hoskins, you'll remember him as uh, Eddie Valiant in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I'm not bad. I'm just strong that way. <laughs> not subtle at all, Jessica Rabbit. Not subtle at all. Anyway, where was I? Yes. A Bob Hoskins who played Mario. This is Mario Mario, and I am Luigi Mario. Don't start with me! <laughs> Over the years, Nintendo said it was the worst movie he's ever been a part of. Hmm, you see why. Over the years, Nintendo has been very hesitant to bring its franchises, which with Mario, Zelda, and Donkey Kong, and others are among their biggest names of, in all of entertainment, to movies and TV. And it's easy to see why. Oh, good grief, how bizarre that. Zelda cartoon. Well, excuse me, princess. Oh, good grief. Why? Why? Anyway. Given their prominence in the entertainment world, Hollywood has surely come knocking for adaptations. And it now appears Nintendo is finally moving ahead. Netflix was reportedly interested in making a Zelda TV show, though this never happened. As for why Nintendo was looking for looking at more licensing deals, Kimishima said in 2016 that fewer and fewer young people are finding out about Nintendo and Nintendo games through games. Instead, they're discovering Nintendo and its characters through things like official license Mario toothbrushes. So you can expect these kind of licensing deals to continue and possibly increase, and possibly increase, Kimishima said all the time. Nice. Okay. Well. A proper Mario movie. How would they go about it though? How would they go about it? Right. Next up, uh, more Nintendo news, and we've got a Mario Kart game coming to mobile devices. Awesome! Let's see what this is about. And this was like, oh, okay, yeah, this was just yesterday, in fact. Right. Nintendo has announced its next mobile game, and it'll be based on the company's long-running Mario Kart franchise. Oh, good grief, the blue shells! What? Blue shells. Why did it have to have to be? Blue shells. Why did it have to be blue shells? <laughs> Nintendo has another... We don't have any other details about the game other than the name, Mario Kart Tour. But presumably, it will feature the same fast-paced power-up fueled racing mayhem that the series is known for, including the blue shells. Why did it have to be blue shells? We've got our fingers crossed that Mario Kart Addictive Multiplayer Element will make it to the mobile version intact. And this is what the tweet said from Nintendo of America, just uh, yesterday morning in fact, at 1.36am to be exact. The checkered flag has been raised and the finish line is near. A new, Mario, a new, new mobile application is now in development. Mario Kart Tour. Hashtag Mario Kart Tour releasing in the fiscal year ending in March 2019. So any time between April and next March. So any time between April this year and March next year. As Reggie fils may would put it, my body is ready. Nintendo's missed mobile efforts. Okay, let's see. Nintendo's mobile efforts have been, so far, a little hit and miss. It recently announced that its Miitomo app will be shutting down in May, and many, dis and many were disappointed by the free-to-play elements of its last game, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. However, Super Mario 1 was much more warmly received, marrying the complexity of a Mario game with the simplicity of a single control smartphone interface. With a release date of the fiscal year ending March 2019, which means a release could technically come as early as April 2018. Fingers crossed we won't have to wait much longer for more details. 
Nintendo did not address just blah, 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 blah. Nintendo did not address the rumors that it is developing a mobile version of its iconic Legend of Zelda franchise. Oh, could you imagine a link to the past on the, on mobiles? Could you imagine that, guys? Oh, how awesome would that be? You, I mean, even the original Zelda. How awesome would that be? <laughs> and uh, just before I get into this next piece of news, I want to send a shout out to um, James Mike over at Disabled Gaming Reviews. His uh, winners for the twenty eight uh, the um, for this year's uh, DGR bloggies are now up on his blog. A link to his blog and Facebook page will be in the description below, alongside my Twitch, Mixer, and Patreon. Okay. ID Software co-founders confirmed that the, its biggest gaming games heroes are all related. Say what? Say what? Turns out BJ Blazkowicz Commander Keen and Doom Guy could all go to the same family reunion. Well, how's about that? This'll be good. Of all the innovations ID software delivered to the video game industry in the 90s, plot certainly wasn't one of them. Still, the company managed to create a few iconic heroes in its PC action heyday and decades after their creation. The company's former bigwigs let loose, of, let loose a fun bit of trivia on Tuesday. Many of ID's biggest heroes are all related. <laughs> Robot chicken. As spotted by Reset ERA, a Twitter conversation unfolded on Tuesday that had been set into motion weeks earlier. A seeming throwaway December post from former ID software designer John Romero, oh good no, included an interesting note that the long-running Wolfenstein series he will be with BJ Blazkowicz was based on the company's earlier side-scrolling was based on the company's early side-scrolling action series Commander Keen. A fan picked up on this and sent a question to ID co-founder Tom Hall: Are these two characters? Related and his Doom's Doom Guy hero also part of the genetic lineage. Hall minced no words in his Tuesday reply. This is where it gets good. The lineage isn't a few. Fact. Longtime ID fans might have already suspected this, based on information in a long ago Wolfenstein hint manual. But this is the first time someone from ID has gone to the trouble of confirming that idea. What's more, Romero piped up the cl to clarify the exact makeup of, of the Blazkowicz clan. The Wolfenstein hero is Commander Keen's grandfather, while Keen is Doom Guy's dad. The duo had been a bit of a back and forth joke chain from there asking why there was a missing gen ge generational badass between Wolfenstein and Keen. Hall claimed that Keen's father was an awesome, heroic, dot dot dot, newscaster, with the stage name of Blaze, which is where Keen's legal name of Billy Blaze came from. Well, how's about that? Learn something new every day. This adds a bit of a Macaver angle to the fact that keen related easter eggs could be found in the Doom series, particularly a secret room in Doom 2 that required you to to gorily kill four hanging versions of the original keen sprite. Ooh, how's about that? Tuesday's trivia tidbit comes after Romero's admission in July 2017 that he played a key role in the iconic cover art of the first Doom game that's standing on corpses, aiming a gun pose came because Romero himself jumped into a photo shoot, posed the way he wanted to cut the cover to look, 
doesn't that kind of make Romero... <laughs> doesn't that kind of make Romero a member of the Blazkowicz clan as well then? That's actually a very valid point! I like that idea! Ultimately, with so little sensible plot... With so little sensible plot connecting these games, the information is more of a fun way to look at the series connections than a major concept explaining Revelation. It's all much less complicated than, say, the Zelda series chronology. chronology. Which splits into three discrete timelines. After the events of Ocarina of Time. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Right. Now, why Microsoft buying Valve would make perfect sense. This could be interesting. It's been speculated recently that Microsoft are considering making an attempt to buy EA. Oh! To buy EA, PUBG Corp, and PC gaming giant Valve. Whilst it seems highly unlikely at this stage, the thought of the tech giant buying Valve may very well take PC gaming to the next level. They'll finally make Half-Life 3! Microsoft have been publishing for years to get people on Windows 10. No matter what you think, you will eventually end up on that system. You are probably on it now. I am. However, Microsoft has not had much success with its Windows Store built into Windows 10. We've seen games launch exclusively on that storefront that just haven't sold well. Dark of Quantum Break, Gears of War 4. Gears of War 4, not Gears of War 5. Clowns. And the latest Dead Rising all come to mind. Two of these games eventually made their way onto Steam and saw better purchase rates. Hold on just a second. Hello? Right, two of these games eventually made their way onto Steam and saw better purchase rates. The simple reason is the Windows Store just doesn't function anywhere near as nicely as Steam. It's pretty clear Microsoft want a monopoly on what is going on with their operating system, and with them wanting to move away from the .exe style of programs, more and more developers will be forced to sell their game Sell, the, sell their game through the Windows Store. But what would make perfect sense for Microsoft is to integrate Steam into the base operating system of Windows 10. Valve, are re Valve aren't really in the business for making single player experiences like... Single Valve aren't really in, in the business for making single player experiences like they have done in the past, with sequels to Half-Life, Portal, Left 4 Dead, Never Seen the Light of Day. Valve are a money-making machine from the combination of Steam, Dota and CSGO. Similar to Nintendo, Valve could quite easily put their feet up for the next 10 years and do nothing, and still have a mountain of money behind them. It's very unlikely that Valve would even consider selling, but money talks, and there is almost no one who can come close to the amount of money Microsoft have to spend. So even EA go oh, of course EA don't like Valve or anything. Yeah, go there, go there, go there, go there, go there. If it means they get a cut of all the money people spend on Steam, then they'll make that money back in no time. It sounds like an absolute no-brainer to have Steam part of Windows 10 at the default store. 
Steam has already started selling applications, programs, and films the same in which the Windows Store and, and, and films, the same in which the Windows Store, but it just works properly. The built-in community features, the storefront, the marketplace, everything just works, connected just one. Microsoft have vested interest in Valve slash Steam. Gamers play on Windows and Microsoft products. We've seen Microsoft make massive steps to change the industry recently with the Game Pass movement and backwards compatibility. So they are making all the right noises to say they actually care about the gaming industry. So to me, it would make perfect sense for them to buy Valve whether Gabe wants to sell up. Whether Gabe wants to sell up, that's another story in itself. Now, I wouldn't be opposed to that. As a matter of fact, I would definitely get behind it. Next, a couple of not so good pieces of news, but uh, this one is um, important to know. Nintendo Switch paid online service launching in September. Ah, so even, okay, first uh, Xbox Live, then PlayStation Plus, and now Nintendo Switch Online. Okay, let's find out about this. Nintendo Switch paid online service. Nintendo Switch has paid online service for launch in September 2018. Nintendo President Tatsumi Kim Kimishima confirmed today in an earnings call. Online play for Switches for Switch games have been free since the system launched in March 2017. Initially, Nintendo planned to launch the paid service in fall 2017, but it was delayed to 2018. At the time, Nintendo announced it would offer one month for $4, three months for $8, and 12 months for $20. But it remains to be seen if those prices are still accurate. By comparison, Xbox Live Gold and PlayStation Plus cost $60 a year. Well, Forty pounds over here, and fifty pounds for PlayStation Plus. Forty for Xbox Live. No. And then, as previously, you'll need membership for online gameplay and online lobby and voice chat through a smartphone app. While you also have to pay to get some eShop deals, normal subscribers can still access the eShop, of course, and register and manage friends, share screenshots on local social media, or on social media, and access Switch parent controls apps. The parents switch parents control parental control. We will report back. We will report back with more details on Nintendo Switch's new online sys service when information becomes available, according to the Wall Street Journal reporter Takashi Mo Mochizu Mochizuki. Nintendo will announce more details in the months ahead. The reporter quoted Kimishima as saying Nintendo plans to make the service attractive with content or other programming with more details on the specifics scheduled to be announced later this year. For more on today's... Da, 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 da. Hmm. Well, personally, I think it was inevitable that uh, Nintendo were going to join the bandwagon of a paid online service. I'm not opposed to it. Moving with the times. a little bit of a disappointment for Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption 2 has been delayed once more, but Rockstar has announced a specific release date of October 26th. In a statement on Rockstar Newswire, a representative, representative wrote, we are excited to announce that Red Dead Redemption 2 will be released on October 26, 2018. We apologize to everyone disappointed by this delay. While we had hoped to have the game out sooner, we require a little extra time for polish. You see, there's a reason to delay your game DA. Not just because you want to, and not just because it's an unrealistic 
launch window. If it was an unrealistic launch window, why did you have it to begin with? We sincerely thank you for your patience and hope that when you get to play the game you will agree the wait will have been worth it. In the meantime, please check out these screenshots from the game. We look forward to sharing a lot more information with you in the coming weeks. Wow, please, these screenshots look fantastic. <laughs> wow. I'm getting Magnificent 7 vibes from it. This is the game's second delay. It was initially scheduled for fall 2017, then moved back to spring 2018. We haven't seen a great deal from the game outside of its two trailers, but we know it will be a prequel star starring a new protagonist called Arthur Morgan and will more than likely feature a GTA Online style multiplayer mode called Red Dead Online. Can get behind that? There's a lot more that we can there's a lot more that we can make educated guesses at to, 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 to check out a few some da, 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 da. In an interesting turn, there's also a chance the game will feature an early new Bordeaux. The setting of Mafia 3. It's unlikely Rockstar will announce any further detail on what that extra polish entails, but we'll have the news for you if we find out. Oh. Interesting. Now, last month before I had to shut down my channel and restart, So let's go down for the delay. So now let's get into a very important segment of the show, the Battle of the Freebies. Do 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 do. So last month Microsoft took January to kick off the year strongly, but can they keep that momentum going? It's Xbox versus PlayStation once again. What are this month's free games on offer? Right. Right. Let's see. Uh, this month, uh, PS. Uh, right. Winners' advantage. They go first. This month, we've got Shadow Warrior. And Assassin's Creed Chronicles India for Xbox One and from the Xbox 360 the games will be backwards compatible on Xbox One as well split second and hey hey come on over have some fun with crazy taxi oh yes that'll be good uh, we've got this will be good right PS4 we've got Knack and Rhyme PS3, we've got Spelunker HD and Mudgeon Souls Z. PS Vita, we've got Exiles End and Grand Kingdom, which is also available on PS4 and the PlayStation VR. 
Jenner, uh, it is Star Blood Arena. Hmm. Like it's one of those things that uh, we know about Mac. Ryan. Sorry, Sony. Microsoft to 2-0 up. They Sony are gonna need to pick their game up. To pick their game up. Now how long have I been gone for? Just over an hour. I need, to, I need to make a couple of edits here and there, but uh, it shouldn't be too hard. Nevertheless, it is time for the best part of the show, and it goes a little something like... Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! <laughs> yes, the... Points and trophies. Ladies and gentlemen, the Trophy Achievement Hunter section is back, and we have got an absolute corker of a game to get you started for 2018. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, released just last week, available only on Xbox One. PlayStation as well though, that's the thing. Yeah, it is available on PlayStation as well, yeah. But uh, Xbox One version is what I'm going for because I'll be going through the secret achievements. And there are one, two, three, four, five. Only five. But nevertheless. And the secret and the secret achievements are as follows. No, the numbers in brackets will be the game score, just for the record. So anyway, it's ho ho ho! What an unexpected thrill. Story complete the enemy warrior arc. My appetite is insatiable! Story complete the Android 21 arc. Bye bye, Boo! Story defeat Clone Kid Boo! Uh, let's see, the first two were worth 30 game of score, and Bye Bye Boo is worth 20. This one's also worth 20 game of score. Story trigger a special conversation sequence, which is conversationalist. And the last secret achievement goes along the lines of set for life. Acquire 20 million zenny through the course of playing. That should be easy enough. And the set for life achievement is worth sixty gamer score. Uh, we've also got one, two, three, four more achievements worth 60 game of score. Care to become the next god of destruction. Arcade, complete a course with an S rank. Before creation comes destruction. Practice, complete 200 different combo challenges. My power level is 530,000. World match, acquire 530,000 BP. Add link level 40. Story raise link level to 40. And that is that. That is this week's uh, rebooted Trophy Achievement podcast out of the way. Uh, 
Hope you enjoyed uh, what you uh, what you saw today, guys. So if you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to continue being chasing, nope. Can't do that now. Uh, if you um, if you want to keep up to date with what I do on my channel, you can hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and click the bell to uh, turn on all notifications so you don't miss anything I do on this channel as well. Um, I've, I've, like I said, I've. I've also got links to my, I've also got links to my Twitch and Mixer uh, for my streaming. I'll be streaming on Twitch if it's PlayStation Four and Mixer if it is Xbox. Uh, what else do? I, uh, what else is there? Uh, yeah, uh, I've also got a Patreon account. I've got a diff I've got a different uh, tiered awards based on how much you pledge, but every pledge will have a get will have a personalised message from yours truly to you guys. And, uh, and uh, you can support from as little as a one dollar a month as well. Uh, what else is there to do? Uh, yes, and any and um, and whatever whatever I uh, receive as far as pledges is concerned, a portion of it portion of it is going to go towards the National Autistic Society. It's a charity that's uh, very cl very close to my heart because I'm aut I'm autistic myself. Last year I ran. Uh, the Great Scottish Run 10k for the um, National Autistic Society, and I raised nearly t I raised nearly 300 pounds from the run, which I'm really happy about. So, without further ado, I will see you guys again very soon. Have a fantastic day. Peace out, and stay faithful.